On today's show, Jalen Green and Alper and Shingun career nights against the OKC Thunder. Jalen Green with a career high in assists. Alper and Shingun a career high in rebounds as they both show out against the Thunder. Jabari Smith Jr. looking more and more confident and comfortable every single game. And hey, the Houston Rockets are learning how to build a big lead and take care of a big lead against opposing teams. We're going to talk about all that and more coming up right here at Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. The Houston Rockets select Jalen Green and Jabari Smith Jr. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. Every time I step on that floor, I'm coming. You're getting somebody who's going to come in with a chip on their shoulder, somebody who's going to come come in and compete from day one. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Winning streak, winning streak, winning streak. Winning streak. What's up? And welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian, a credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays, host of the State of the Rockets podcast, as well as Rockets Watch. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin and the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets, free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, where you can help the show out tremendously by commenting anything below. But For today's episode, let me know what your favorite play was from this game because there were so many to choose from. (laughs) I feel like there were more highlights in this one Rockets win than there were in like all the other wins combined possibly because they were just kind of like, I mean, the Rockets were just kind of clowning on the Thunder. Let's let's be completely honest here. I mean, it was this was a blowout. Rockets completely, you know, busted this game wide open in the second quarter and didn't look back. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Their ability to uh, create and then subsequently maintain a lead was a really important part of of this game. Uh, But Jalen Green and Alperin Shingun, uh, just star-studded performances, right? Career nights for both of them. Jalen Green, career-high nine assists. Alperin Shingun, career-high 19 rebounds. Almost just on the cusp of a 2020 game for Alperin Shingun. We'll talk about both of them. uh, And by popular demand, they are your co locked on Rockets players, players, players of the game because Alper and Shingun won the player of the game poll on Twitter. Jalen Green won the player of the game poll on YouTube, but on both sides, there were comments, mentions, whatever, that said both guys should earn the honor for this game because they both absolutely showed out against OKC. So for the first time this season and for the first time ever in locked on Rockets history, we have two co-player, I guess not two co, whatever, co-player of the game. So they're both going to get the honors, but we're going to talk about Jalen Green first because his continued growth and development as a playmaker continues to astound me, right? At, at Jalen Green had a career-high eight assists and zero turnovers at halftime of this game. So things got a little you know, sloppy there in the second half. He only had one more assist through the second half and then he had, you know, handful of turnovers. It's bound to happen, right? He wasn't going to, he wasn't going to have an absolute masterclass game for the entire game, but the eight assists, zero turnovers and just his career high nine assists is so encouraging over these last eight games. Jalen is, has at least four assists in each of these last eight games. So he's averaging six assists over the entire eight game stretch. For the first 78 games of Jalen's career, he only averaged uh, two and a half assists per game. So he's basically more than doubled his assists per game average over this eight-game stretch. And this is like that stretch of time where we're seeing Jalen really add the playmaking to his, his repertoire, right? Where he's making it a point to playmake, right? It's not just, okay, I'm trying to score and then I'm gonna playmake because that's like, option B on the play, right? It's Jalen is going into plays with the idea that he's going to create at times, I feel like now. And it it really goes to, I mean, the game really is slowing down for him. Like you're seeing him make these reads, right? Where he'll drive it in from the strong side and then, you know, go in towards the free throw line and like kick it back out to KPJ, boom, three pointer, or he snakes the pick and roll. And then he's able to kind of get towards the rim and like, even like, fake with like his eyes or a little head fake and get 
get the big or the defender like on his heels or just off balance a little bit and then shovel pass like over to Al P. And then Al P. Jalen is using his threat and his gravity to create to create advantage for his teammates, which is just next level stuff, right? And his teammates are feeding off of it, right? And they just look so good. Like when Jalen is playing this well, when when he when shots are falling for him, and he's scoring at the level that we know he can score at consistently, and he's playmaking at the level that he's been as over these last you know eight or so games, he's an unstoppable force on offense. Like this guy's going to lead the NBA in scoring one day, and he might also be like a top ten assist guy one day. Like that's kind of insane to think about, and. It was funny after the game, I, you know, I, I asked him because he finished at 28 points and he finished at nine assists. And I asked Jay and I was like, hey, so like, what did you want more? Did you want the 30 points more? Or did you want the 10th dime more? And he said, man, I wanted the 10th dime because I feel like people are sleeping on my playmaking. And it's true. Like, I think Jalen has this like negative, like stereotype is like a bucket getter or whatever, empty stats guy. And that's just, that's not his game, right? He's so unselfish on the floor, but he is still, he's still a walking bucket. And that's exactly what he was in this game. At one point he was six of six from long range. Like he hit, so, he hit so many difficult threes in this game. Like he had, you know, off the catch, whatever he had, the one where he was like a few feet behind the three point line and just kind of like, hesitated for a second, looked up at the clock and just decided to fire a long three and drained it like it was nothing. He, you know, had some kind of coming off little screens from Alper and Shingoon. He had the one where KPJ whipped it cross court and, you know, got into the step back. And I think that was his fifth one, right? He like stepped back and, and drained it for his fifth three of the game. Just overall, when you look at Jalen's night, I mean, he had a, he had a superstar evening, 28 points, 11 of 19 shooting, six of nine from three point land. Nice. Missed his last three threes, but uh, two rebounds, nine assists. Again, eight assists in the first half, zero turnovers. Finished the game with nine assists and, and four turnovers. So things got a little you know messy there in the second half. But just threw and through a, a fantastic night from Jalen Green, and he looks, you know, he he's growing into a superstar every single game. Like this guy is is a is a bona fide future superstar. When you look at the scoring, when you look at the playmaking, when you look at his ability to impact the game in other ways, right? He can use his athleticism to get rebounds. He can impact the game defensively when he dials in on guys like he did against Trey Young in the Hawks game. This guy, this young man is 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 a is going to be a bona fide super, superstar one day. I can't say enough good things about him. I, I think this game this game was just a ton of fun. And then like I, highlight play of the game, right? Jalen getting the lob from KPJ. I mean. He, <laughs> I don't even know how he like I shouldn't I shouldn't doubt anymore when Jalen goes up to catch something like he's going to get it. Um, but he, he went up and like one handed just boom, that dunk was in. I couldn't believe it in real time when I saw it. And it's even crazier to watch the highlight like in slow mo of how how he catches the ball like it like it's like an NFL wide receiver, right? Like Randy Mossing it and just boom. It's ridiculous. Fantastic game from Jalen Green. Really, really strong night. He is. One of your locked on rockets player of the game players of the game in this one, whatever. That's it's it's not an award meant for two guys, but we're making the exception in this show. Coming up, want to talk about Alperin Shingun, his fantastic game as well, because Al P also showed out against the OKC that he was toying with the Thunder all night. He was doing whatever he wanted to do <laughs> against the Thunder. We're gonna talk about his fantastic game and how he looks kind of how other guys have looked playing or looked playing off of him in this game. And if it's something that can be a continued thing moving forward, we're gonna get there. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want wherever you want it from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday. Find affordable economy cards if you're on a budget and just need to get from point A to point B. You can even test drive that new electric vehicle that you've had your eye on to see how it fits your everyday lifestyle. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to your doorstep. Every trip is backed by li liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Let's talk a little Alperin Shingun. Alpi, always. 
because LP was just doing whatever he wanted against the OKC Thunder in this game on his way to a career night, 21 points, 19 boards, career high, six of them offensive, offensive glass, 10 of 17 shooting, ridiculously efficient night, missed his only three, made his only free throw, had seven dimes, three steals, two blocks, only three turnovers in 34 minutes of run. Um, LP is the youngest player in NBA history to post this specific stat line. I don't know. NBA stats are kind of weird, right? Cause it's like, you know, first player to shoot a left-handed three on like the second Tuesday of the month. Like NBA stats are kind of funny like that. You can cherry pick it and basically make NBA anybody, the youngest player to do X, Y, Z on any given night. But it was a very impressive stat line. And he's the youngest player in NBA history to have done it at 20 years and 124 days of age. He is also the fourth youngest player in NBA history to have had the 20 plus point night and 19 rebounds. So that's an impressive note as well. One rebound shy of a 2020 night for Alpi would have been a ton of fun. Uh, I'm sure he'll have a 2020 night at some point in his career, but he's also scored 20 plus now three times this season after doing it last season, three times across the entire year. So uh, Alpi continues to do what he does, right? When he's given adequate run when he's given a significant portion of the workload of the five spot, he makes things happen. And I made a point last pod about the Hawks game, about the Rockets looking more comfortable with Garuba and Fernando out there. I think this game was the most comfortable the Rockets have looked with Alperin Shingun on the floor and playing off of Alperin Shingun the entire season, right? Because they, this was like the perfect blend of letting Al P be Al P, letting him do his things on the floor, letting him get his post ups, letting him get his touches, but also other guys feeding off of him and playing off of him and, and him still impacting the game in ways besides just touching the ball and, and getting post ups, right? He was screening at a really high level. I mean, it, some of the screens he was setting offensively were opening things up for, for Jalen, for Kevin Porter Jr., off ball screens for guys like Jabari. I mean, he was doing so many little things this game. He was rolling. He was finishing well at the, I mean, he was, he was scoring in, in such a variety of ways, right? He was finishing as a roller. He was catching the ball on, you know, he would, he was, you know, getting guys sealed off in the post and spinning and turning and finishing. He was backing them down he was creating three point opportunities. Uh, just this was a really, really, really well rounded game from Al P. And, and just like Jalen, right? Flashes of like future stardom. Because this is why this is why you look at Al P. And you're like, yeah, he's baby, he's baby Jokic, which is actually exactly what KPJ said after the game. Uh, KPJ called him baby Jokic, like right after the game. So because some of the di- some of the dimes in this game, I mean, he had the he had the one where he, you know, went up against Jeremiah Robinson Earl, completely missed it, got the rebound off the, you know, off the miss, and then Jabari cut into the lane and he flips the behind. I mean, that that has to be like the dime of the game for me. I don't know if that's that's your favorite assist of his. He had the one where he brought the ball up in transition and like no looked it to Eric Gordon out for three. I mean there's too many good ones to choose from, right? This was like a, this was like a, vi- I want to say, I don't want to call it a vintage LP game, right? But it does kind of feel like this season, it's, it's been an adjustment period for his teammates to, to really understand how to play off of him and, and to play off of him really successfully. And for LP to kind of get back into that groove of finding his teammates, because he did that so many times last year. And it felt like this year, it's been a bit more of a, you know, kind of like, not pulling teeth to get him to pass the ball. Alpi's still an incredibly willing passer, but something about just the Rockets and, and how they've been able to feed off of Alpi hasn't quite been there the way that it was last year where we had some of these like highlight reel passes where you're like, yo, how did he even make that happen, right? Magician level passes. Some of them have been there, but they've been fewer and further between than they were last season, which is weird because last season he was coming off the bench. He was still playing behind Christian Wood, all that. This year he's gotten significantly more run and it feels like it's been a little bit less, but this was just a, a really, really strong showcase for LP. I think my favorite part about this game was, I mean, I was a little frustrated at first thinking it was not going to was not going to end well with Jalen and KPJ not being staggered. And then 
but by by staggering or by going back to not staggering those guys, what Steven Silas was able to do is have Al P and Eric Gordon come back in to run the second unit, and they ran a majority of their offense through Alper and Shingun, which I think is is an is a balance, right? Basically, of your three of your dynamic guys on this team, you've got three guys, and at, at all times, at least one of them should be on the floor, and that's Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, and Alper and Shingun. And by mirroring Jalen and KPJ, and Jalen was still aggressive, even though he was mirrored to KPJ, he was still aggressive, he was still facilitating a high level, which was great to see. It allowed Al P to have that, you know, top of the second quarter, that you know, whatever the second unit group to kind of run that group himself, right? And we saw him take a, take advantage of that, right? Where he was getting post ups, he had the kick out pass to Tari, boom, three pointer. Had the cross court pass to Garrison Matthews, boom, three pointer. You know, was was feasting on the interior, kind of getting whatever he wanted. So, if that's the if that's kind of the options there, if it's you know, okay, don't stagger those two guys, then you've got to like learn to live with Al P. I do think that Al P and Jalen Green have a, a really fantastic chemistry with one another. I do think they play off of each other incredibly well, right? In the pick and roll, in dribble handoffs, screening on the perimeter, all of that. It looks great. They've developed a really good chemistry. I think there's still some work to be done on the chemistry to develop between Al P and Kevin Porter Jr. But in this game, Al P just did a really f- fantastic job, e- even defensively, right? The three steals, the couple blocks. Now, again, OKC doesn't have like a, a super dominant interior presence, right? Like the Nuggets do. And Alpi's going to have a you know pretty huge test in front of him against Nikola Jokic in back-to-back games in Denver at altitude. So we'll see how that plays out. But, you know, Jeremiah Robinson or El Poku, like those guys aren't, you know, huge interior guys. But, but Alpi held his own defensively this game. I think that SGA kind of got whatever he wanted, and there were some moments in the pick and roll where you're like, okay, SGA is going to carve up whoever is in front of him, right? SGA had moments where he was, you know, still getting what he wanted against Usman Garuba in the pick and roll. He's just that talented of a scorer. SGA makes what he does look effortless, not to like segue into the thunder, but I mean, SGA had like the quietest 32 points that I've ever seen. It was like, I look up and I was like, oh, he's got 20 something. Oh, he's got, you know, what? Like, I was just like, as as the game was going on, um, just makes it look so smooth when he's out there on the floor. Uh, 12 of 21 shooting for SGA on his way to, to the 32 points. Just didn't have a ton of help elsewhere, you know, on the Thunder Thunder roster. I mean, Aaron Wiggins had 15. Josh Giddy had 18. Uh, Josh Giddy felt like he had a rougher game than he actually did when you're looking at the box score. Like, there were just moments where you're like, man, Josh Giddy's having a rough night. He was a... What was it? Team worst minus 26. Like the minutes where Josh Giddy was on the floor, like the, the thunder just struggled. I think a part of that is because they didn't have to, the Rockets defensively didn't really have to worry about Josh Giddy as a shooter. And whoever was like guarding Josh Giddy was kind of playing free safety at times defensively where they were able to really like dig and help and, and, you know, rotate off of Josh Giddy and that kind of like, you didn't have to worry about like rotating out to Josh Giddy super quickly because he's not a great shooter. So I don't know. I think that helped the Rockets out quite a bit defensively, but Alper and Shingun, fantastic game. And this, this, if this is the version of Alp that the Rockets can get every single game, like he doesn't have to put up these monster numbers, but if, if guys can start playing and looking comfortable playing off of Alp in games like this, where it doesn't feel clunky at points where it feels like they're, they're getting a, a, a healthy dose, dose of both sides, right? Where Jalen and, and Kevin are still able to do their thing. Jabari's still getting his touches and his shot attempts. And then Alp is able to still get his right. Again, those bench units, that second quarter bench unit where like LP had Jabari and like Garrison Matthews and Eric Gordon. He was sh- surrounded by shooters and guys who could, you know, he could kick the ball out to and, and just get a shot up, like having all that spacing to work with. And d- again, just some of the, some of the wild stuff that LP was doing this game, the passing, the bring the ball up the court, the one where he brought the ball up the court and like, just took Jeremiah Robinson Earl off the dribble, like, from the like full court, like coast to coast, got to the three point line. JRE kind of stopped him, and then he still drove the ball in and like spun on him and finished. Like Alpi was just in his bag. His bag was humongous this game, and it was a ton of fun to see. He was he was a walking, living, breathing highlight reel in this one. But final segment here in just a moment. I do want to talk about Jabari Smith Jr., his continued growth and confidence. KPJ kind of struggling early in this game and then finding himself in the second half. The Rockets learning how to 
uh, actually build a lead and s maintain a lead, which is a, a stunning development. We're gonna talk about all that, but first, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Next game, how about Jalen Green to go, we'll say over 25.5 points. I feel like at this point, that's a pretty safe bet. How about Alper and Shingun, who is now a rebounding phenom? Let's, let's say over on 8.5 boards for Al P. Uh, how about Jabari Smith Jr.? We'll say over on 3.5 threes. And then what about KPJ? We'll take the under on 4.5 turnovers. I feel like that's a decent bar for KPJ. So what is prize picks, right? How does it work? Basically, you pick two to six players, and if they go, if they score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to 25 times back on your money on any single entry that you submit. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. That includes NBA, NFL, NHL, PGA, college football, you name it. They've got you covered over at PrizePix. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that simple. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PrizePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. And final segment here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything. Houston Rockets basketball. Jabari Smith Jr. Keeps trending up, man. Like, I, I mean, he is starting to look like the version of Jabari Smith Jr. that we thought we were going to get, like, right out of the gate. And I mean, he finished... 15 points, 5 of 11 shooting, 3 of 8 from long distance, had a couple free throws, had 13 rebounds. Like, he is really starting to understand how to use his size, how to elevate for rebounds, right? That was kind of like a... I really do think, like, that ankle injury must have really been, like, lingering, or maybe it's it was something where he, you know, wasn't super trusting his body during those first, you know... Little, little stint of the season, but like, I mean, there were certain points where you're like, you're looking at Jabari trying to rebound or trying to do stuff on the court. And you're like, man, he looks a little stiff and he still looks a little stiff out there at times. But I mean, there's moments where now he like, he's skying for rebounds, right? Where he's like getting up there and like, just like, that's my rebound, right? Like rebounding like a man out there. And I mean, he, he had, he had five rebounds in the first three and a half minutes of this game. Like I remember, I remember tweeting that, you know, remarking on that because I just thought it was kind of a crazy stat to look at that he was already halfway towards a, you know, uh, a double-digit rebound night within the first three and a half minutes of the game. But making his impact felt defensively, right? Seeing what he can do on that end, had a block in this game. Uh, and then being aggressive with the three-point shot. I mean, at one point, uh, Silas was talking about like a, an interaction that he had with Jabari uh, at, during a timeout or during a dead ball or whatever where... Uh, Jabari caught a pass from KPJ and he caught it really low and he wound up not shooting it. I can't remember the specific possession that, that Steven was referencing, but he, he was talking about the fact that like he told Jabari, he was like, I want you to shoot that. And Jabari was like, I caught it really low and I, and I couldn't. And, and Steven was like, I don't care. I want you to shoot it. Like, like that's, that's Steven's like message for Jabari is like, shoot the damn ball. And that's what Jabari's doing, right? Like, I mean, he opened the, he opened the game with a three, right? He's, he's shooting, much more aggressively, right? He's trying to get to his shot quicker. Um, he's finding these little windows, right? He's, he had the dribble pull up three at one point in this game. Uh, that confidence is just, it, it, it's it's dialed up to 11 now, right? He understands what he can do. He understands the shots that he should be taking offensively. He's not trying, he's not trying to do a little bit too much, right? He's focusing on the three-point opportunities. And if, you know, teams are running him off the three-point line, then he's still a willing you know, willing driver and he'll put the ball on the floor and try to make something happen at the rim. But for the most part, he doesn't have to do that because he's six foot 11. And he could shoot over the top of anybody. So seeing him, seeing that confidence continue to grow has been great over this recent stretch of games. And I just want to see him continue to build that up, right? Kevin Porter Jr. in this game, rough start. Like, and this ties into the Rockets flow of the game. KPG had a rough start to this one. Uh, if I want to, let me dial back the, the box score here to the first quarter. Uh, I mean, KPJ after the first quarter, he had, he was one of three shooting, missed his only three, had three turnovers, one assist, cup, you know, a rebound. So the Rockets jumped out to a 14, four lead in the first quarter. Right. And then the thunder, I don't want to say came roaring back, but I mean, the thunder basically 
bought, you know, got their way back into the game because the Rockets had zero turnovers during the first four ish minutes of the game, three and a half minutes of the game when they jumped out to that double digit lead 14, four. And then the Rockets went and turned it over seven times over the remaining like eight minutes of the first quarter. And those seven turnovers allowed the thunder to get back into the game. So basically OKC tied things up at 20 and then it was there top of the second quarter where the Rockets started to rebuild their lead, right? So Rockets kind of, you know, they jumped out early. Then OKC came back. OKC even took the lead a little bit late in the first quarter. Then uh, Rockets were able to kind of hold on and, you know, bounce back a little bit there in the second quarter, build up the lead. And then about halfway through the second quarter, I mean, they just, they bust the thing. They busted the game completely wide open, right? Went on huge runs. And the thing was, is they didn't relinquish the lead, Right. The Rockets did a good job of keeping their foot on the gas and not stopping until the very, 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 very end when Silas basically pulled, you know, pulled his starters, pulled guys out final few minutes of the game. And, you know, they wound up only winning the game by 13, 118-105. But it was, oh, hair on my tongue, that's fun. Love that podcasting quality, but... (laughs) uh anyways fun little just outtake i'm not i'm not editing that out i don't edit things out of the show but uh right the rockets they they, they've had so many games right where they've had the ability they've gone up double digits they've had big leads and they've watched those big leads like evaporate right where they've gone up big against the team and then they just can't hold on to the lead so it was i thought it was showed a sign of maturity right to go from right you have this Tough game against the Hawks where you claw back in, you fight, second night of a back-to-back. You get up big against another young team, and you don't let go of the rope, right? We've seen the Rockets let go of the rope a lot this season. And so to to not have that happen against the Thunder, right? They closed out the Thunder strong, kept their foot on the gas. I thought that was a really, really promising sign uh, and just, again, continues to be uh, a point of encouragement for this Rockets team and hopefully something that they can continue to build on Moving forward. Now, when you're looking at the other guys in this Rockets game, some of the other little tip ins that we've got here um, on. Actually, I should say I wasn't finished with the KPJ point. Uh, KPJ struggled in that first quarter and he didn't have a a great game overall, but I do think he got he was better in the second half. Right. I mean, he finished the first half uh, with just. He had one assist and four turnovers by the end of the first half, right? Second half comes along. He got five dimes in the second half, only one turnover. So, like, he cleaned himself He cleaned himself up a little bit, cleaned his play up a little bit in the second half. Um, still struggled from the floor, 6 of 13 shooting, you know, 1 of 5 from deep. Uh, he, was, he was much better inside the arc than he was behind the arc in this game. So, you know, a little... Sometimes the three ball is falling. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you got to recognize when you've got it going or when you don't. But at the same time, I do think KPJ didn't, you know, he didn't dominate the ball. He still got the ball to the guys that needed to have it, right? Jalen Green, most shot attempts on the team. Al P, second most shot attempts. KPJ had 13 attempts, right? Only two more than Jabari. And and Jabari primarily is just shooting, you know, the the open threes that he gets. So I will, I will, despite KPJ not having a good night, he did a good job of not, like forcing the issue, right? That's so much of my problem with KPJ at times is it feels like he gets into this like headspace where he's like, I got to force the issue. I got to try and get going, right? And he's focused on getting himself going and it takes the Rockets out of the game because other guys can get going and it doesn't all have to be, you know, on KPJ's shoulders. And I think this game is a good, good example of that, right? Jabari was able to score. EG was able to score. Al P had a huge night. Jalen had a huge night. And even though, KPJ had his turnovers, even though he couldn't hit threes in this game. It didn't matter because he was he was not impeding the ability of the other guys to do their job. He was orchestrating the offense, bringing the ball up quickly, getting the Rockets into their sets. That's all you have to do, right? Doesn't have to be a home run game every game from KPJ. Just a nice little, you know, little single, whatever. A double play here and there. It's pretty nice. Um, I don't know why I'm making other sports references. I made the football reference earlier, the Randy Moss with... Jalen Green, so that's football and baseball reference in one podcast. And for somebody who doesn't, like, super-duper watch those other sports, I probably shouldn't be making those references. But um, Garrison Matthews got some run in this game. Uh, I was a little, eh, because it felt like Tari Eason got pulled a little early and some of his minutes got impacted uh, because Gary Bird was getting run in this game. But Gary Bird had had a big game last game, and he had another strong evening in this one. Three of four from downtown. Uh, hit a couple free throws, had 11 points off the Rockets bench, had a couple rebounds, you know, just doing, just doing Gary Bird things out there, right? And 
comes to the we come to the realization that uh, Gary Bird, I guess, just like I, something about like the end, you know, the end of November, like right, like post Thanksgiving, and like Gary Bird just like turns it on, right? Ben Dubose was, you know, our, our weekly co-host Ben Dubose, Podfather, was joking on Twitter saying that, uh, or somebody was joking on Twitter in in his reply saying that we should just feed Gary Bird like Thanksgiving food all year long and he'll just become like the best shooter in the NBA. Um and I bring I bring you this question as a bonus easter egg if you made it to the end of the episode and you're listening, let me know in the YouTube comments who would you take in a three-point shootout? Post Thanksgiving or we'll just we'll just call it Thanksgiving Gary Bird or March Eric Gordon. Who would you take in a three-point shootout? Cuz we know that Eric Gordon turns into like prime Ray Allen in March. And Gary Bird turns into Gary Bird, you know, late November. So it'd be it'd be hilarious if the Rockets actually do reel off like another seven game win streak. And it's like on the wings of Gary Bird taking flight again, because that was like the craziest phenomenon last season. And if it like happens again this year at the exact same time that it happened last year, I don't even know what to say um, other than just like Gary Bird is going to become the most valuable player for any team who wants to win the majority of their games in December, uh, late November, early December, I should say. But it's good to see him, you know, connecting on his shots, getting his minutes. Uh, I thought Silas rode the starters a lot harder than I kind of expected uh, in the second night of a back to back. Uh, it felt like the goon squad probably could have gotten a bit more run in this game. KJ after his huge night uh, against the Hawks, really strong game. Unfortunately, relegated back to the bench, just one of five shooting, uh, five boards for KJ, had an assist. Garuba off the bench, a uh, bit of a quiet night for Garuba. Uh, again, only 13 minutes. This Alpi was so dominant in this matchup, and, and again, the the Thunder or didn't really have like a an interior presence that you want Garuba to be able to like shut down or kind of manhandle a little bit. So LP and his offensive repertoire is much more beneficial in this game. And so it makes sense that he got the 34 minutes that he did. And he was also still, you know, effective defensively as well. But the goon squad just didn't get, you know, the nearly the run that I feel like they normally get in, in other games. And part of that has to do with Garrison Matthews getting his 18 minutes off the bench as well. Uh, Tari Eason off the bench, six boards, had a couple steals, a couple turnovers, uh, and a handful of missed layups again. So, I mean, somebody was saying, like, Tari Eason would be rookie of the year right now if he could just hit layups on Twitter. And I thought that was kind of hilarious. Um, I, there was a point where Tari, like, went up and, like, dunked something, and I was like, hey, I mean, can't miss layups if you don't shoot layups, right? So, like, if, if he just... If you just started dunking stuff instead of trying to lay it in, um, it could it could go a long way. But I know that's not it's not easy to just ask him to dunk everything. Um, he'll get it figured out. He's he's too good of a player, right? He's he, he's the ability to get to the rim, and then sometimes he's just the Corey Brewer special, right? Sorry, coach, got to the rim, shook him, you know, got to the rim, ran out of the talent. Sometimes that happens with Tari. He'll, he'll get it figured out. I'm not worried about him. But uh, a great win on the second night of a back to back for the Houston Rockets. Uh, some. Really fantastic play from Jalen Green, Alperin Shingun, your co-Locked on Rockets players of the game, showing flashes of future stardom from both of them. You can see the vision, and if the Rockets are able to have nights like this consistently moving forward where those two guys are able to really play to their strengths like they were in this game, again, you're not going to play the Thunder every single night, but those two guys can still play like this against good teams. That's that's how talented they are. So it'll be, I'm really, ho hopefully this is something that the Rockets can build on. I don't exactly want them to start like stringing together too many wins now because you got Wimbenyama and Scoot Henderson at the end of the tunnel. But at the same time, it's fun to be able to talk about some wins, right? Like it's, it's a little grating to have to talk about losses all the time. So, I, and I, I do think that with this gauntlet coming up, the Rockets got to deal with Denver back-to-back -back in Denver. Then they got to do a back-to-back first in Phoenix on Friday of next week, and then they fly out to the Bay for a Saturday, I mean, for a Saturday rematch with the Warriors. Uh, these next four games are going to be brutal. So the Rockets desperately needed this little reprieve, this little two-game slate. They got their their four days off before Thanksgiving. They got the back-to-back -back right after Thanksgiving. They knocked out two dubs back-to-back. -back. Uh, and let's see if they can, you know, get on the road and, and you know, make Denver compete for some, you know, compete in, in these next couple games. If they could come away with just one win out of these next two Denver games to kind of build on this momentum, I feel like that'd be a good thing for this young Rockets team. But with that, 
That's going to do it for today's episode. As always, appreciate you for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Google, brand new Odyssey app, free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, where you can help the show tremendously by commenting whatever you want below. Tell me your favorite assist from this game. Jalen and Al P combined for 16 beautiful dimes in this game. Tell me which one was your favorite. That's my question of the day. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.